start. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. It's customary here at Muhammad's Mosque of Islam that we begin and end all things in truth. Well, we already had the prayer. Yes. But it is in the name of Almighty God Allah, Master for our Muhammad, the King of Kings, and the God of all Lords, who came out of the East and to the West to seek and to save a people who have been lost. We shall forever praise his name and thank him for having come out of Mecca, Arabia, to the Western Hemisphere, the wilderness hills of North America, to seek and to find us a lost sheep or a lost lamb. We thank him for raising up in our midst a divine messenger, leader, teacher, and guide in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is indeed our spiritual mother Mary of the Bible and Holy Quran. We thank him for his service and his commitment of 44 years right here in the wilderness hills of North America to bring up a nation within a nation, the lost found nation of Islam. But we do know that that nation fell uh, upon the physical death of the most idolized Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and his physical son, Wallace D. Muhammad, took over the reins of the lost found nation of Islam and tore it down. Uh, but there was one that the Bible said would stand up and who would be like unto Moses likened to that Moses who people had spent 400 years in the bondage, that there would be one to rise up from up under their feet. This one would be the one whom the Spirit would settle upon and not leave. I Meaning he would not be a wishy-washy brother. He would not believe this one day and then turn back on his belief and believe and go serving after or whoring after other gods. This one, the book said that the spirit would remain on him. And that's how you will know that he is the son of man. The very spirit of truth in the earth at this hour. That one that I speak of is none other than the honorable Silas Muhammad. We thank him for his service, his commitment, to the second resurrection of the lost foundation of Islam and for placing us on the path of government, establishing a government and ultimately achieving a land that we can call our own. It is in their names, the name of Muhammad, Almighty God Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, and in the name of Muhammad Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of God, and in the name Muhammad, Silas Muhammad, the son of man, the truth, in the earth of this hour. It is in their names do I greet you, beloved brothers and sisters in peace. We say assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Would also like to honor the monarch, the queen of the lost found nation of Islam, an Afro-descendant nation, our beloved Queen Nishaki Muhammad, the wife of the Honorable Salas Muhammad. We like to recognize her for her commitment and her service to the Lost Foundation of Islam and Afro Descent Nation. For it was she who stood by the side of the Honorable Salas Muhammad when he challenged Wallace. She was supporting him back in Los Angeles, doing work for us even before we were stood up. We thank her for her service. Once again, believers, it's good to see you here. You could have not have chosen a better place to be than Muhammad's Mosque of Islam. Although we're few in numbers, uh, we're many in terms of the spirit, yes, okay, and the truth that is to be revealed in the earth at this hour. Each and every one of you are precious in the sight of Almighty God Allah, His Messenger, and the Honorable Sons Muhammad. 
for you are witness bearers of the time and the man who is on the scene at this hour bringing us into a, a knowledge of the truth. Well, last week we talked about a land flowing with milk and honey. And we pointed out in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's book, A Message to the Black Man, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, although he was a spiritual man, and he brought a spiritual message under the guise of religion, Islam, that he often spoke, and the crux of his message was political, not the old world politics, but new world politics. He was keenly aware that black people in America and those who were displaced throughout the uh, transatlantic slave trade lacked their humanity. So when he observed the lost founds and the Christians, Martin Luther King and that bunch, moving toward integration into mainstream America and pushing for what they call civil rights, he knew that that was not the divine and ultimate solution to our problem. But for them, he looked as though he was not on time, not politically correct. But that was the old world politics. That was the politics of the devil. His aim, his purpose was to catch you as you were coming up, as he was teaching, and to throw you off the path for the new world politics that he was bringing in. He said, you lack your humanity. He said that we were not what ready to be delivered. He knew that one day we would have to take our place on the world stage. That was what he was doing, getting us ready. He said land and qualifications. He's got a whole chapter, a section in his book dedicated to land and qualifications. Well, what qualifications must you have? He said, you must be able to identify yourself. You must have an identity. Unless you have an identity and then some land that you can call your own, how can you take your place on the world stage? Identity is first. But to be recognized in the UN, you have some organizations that went before the, the UN. You remember PLO? Yeah. They were a NGO. Okay? Yes, what was the guy's name? Uh, uh, Arafat. He spent many years trying to get recognition for his people. So ultimately, they were able to secure some land, and they got recognition in the UN. They were able to speak with the other nations in the UN. They had a flag that represented them. You look at the Native Americans here in the United States, ask yourself, well, where is their flag? They once occupied the land here in the United States but their land was taken from them. They had an identity, the whatever tribes you might call them by. They were placed in reservations, but they didn't have control over those reservations such that that control, that independence superseded the United States of America. So when we go to the UN, we don't see the Sioux Nation's flag being flown in the UN. Today, you don't see the lost foundation of Islam's flag flown in the UN. We're in the beginning phases of establishing our identity as a people and then ultimately taking our place on the world stage. But that is 
our ultimate goal. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad projected it that there would be a day where you will live under a constituted government and you would be able to fly your flag and be accepted amongst the other civilized nations of the planet Earth. Yes, sir. Right now, today, we are recognized as a people, the Afro-descendant nation. But we can't stop there. We must move forward and get the body of our people to come together and lay our claim for an independent state that we can call our own. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted for us. That's what Almighty God Allah wanted for us. That's what the Honorable Silas Muhammad is calling for us. A government and a land that we can call our own. Now what basis does it have in the scripture? We can look in the Bible. And we went over a few of the chapters books in the Bible, and I want to go through it in a little more detail so we can clearly see that we are right and exact and on time with the fulfillment of the book. If you look in Exodus chapter 3, it says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Hebron, the mountain of God. Now, we know that that mountain is somewhere in the east. But we also know that mountains in the book, the, the Holy Quran and Bible, are referred to governments or a lofty state of mind. And this book says that this mountain, God, dwelled there. Well, we know that no God lives in a mountain. The only God that we know lives in the mind of a man. So the book and the prophets, our forefathers, are telling us that here's an elevated place in the mind of man that God resides. And now Moses is visiting this elevated place in the mind where God resides. It says, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and it did not burn. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight why the bush does not burn. And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses. Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. He says, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals from the place where you are standing, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. So here is a man that's speaking with God and he says in verse 8, so I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now we know that if you go out here if you did any yard work and had to burn up bushes or leaves, when you burn up them leaves or bushes, it's going to be consumed, right? Yes, sir. So the, the symbolism that is being used in the book is not in reference to a physical bush that is burning, but it's the spirit of truth that is burning within the mind of a man. Now, we know that the Most High Elijah Muhammad fulfilled the prophetical role of Moses, the first advent of Moses, and that he did speak face to face with a God. He did observe a burning bush 
in the personage, a light coming from the personage of Almighty God Allah, Master Farah Muhammad. And he did approach that bush. And he did experience a lofty transition and an elevation in mind once that God took up with him and started teaching him. The evidence of it is that he took that fire that he saw from God and built the lost foundation of Zion. The Honorable Silas Muhammad, in like manner, went up the mountain. Not a physical mountain, but went up in elevation in his mind. He did not speak to Almighty God Allah face to face. But he came face to face with the reality that there is no God but man. He came face to face with that fire that was burning within his own mind and understood as he ascended to that level. And he said as he descended from the plane going into Los Angeles to challenge Wallace, he experienced an elevated thought because he was going to put his life on the line for us as a people. So he came into an awareness of self and awareness of God. He came face to face with the reality that there is no God but the human being man. And he was that man. The book says, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. And I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering, so have come down to rescue them in the land of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good land and a precious land and a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, Almighty God Allah did come down from heaven. We know that heaven is the holy seat of Mecca, Arabia. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says he took off his holy garments and came to live amongst the people. He had heard the afflictions of our people and came to be with us. In like manner, the Honorable Silas Muhammad while there in Los Angeles, California saw the fall of the nation of Islam. Here's the people who had taken up with the first coming of Christ, the God, Master Farah Muhammad, who had been delivered spiritually from the yoke of bondage being under the white man. Here's some 250 to 500,000 followers of the Iron Village Muhammad who had come out of Egypt, so to speak, the American traditions and way of life. That he was a new man, a, a different man. He was not perfect, but he was different from the Negro that he was under the white man to some extent. You saw a different way of dress of the Muslims, am I right? Yes, they wore a suit and a tie in the streets where they shaved their face, where you once saw them all bushy haired and red eyes and wearing all kinds of clothes. You saw a man who began now to respect his woman. He had come out of Egypt spiritually and began to practice a different way of life. My point is that Master Farad Muhammad when he came and the Arab Elijah Muhammad when he taught us for 44 years did not physically liberate us from Egypt land but he did spiritually liberate us from Egypt land. And it wasn't until 1975 that the nation of Islam fell 
that we began to go astray. Let's read in uh, verse 13. It says, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is this name? Then what shall I tell them? Moses said, or God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Well, also said to Moses, Say to the Israelite, Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and the name by which I am to be remembered from generations to generations. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me, and I have watched over you and have seen what have been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you out of your misery into Egypt into a land of the Canaanites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of the Israel will listen to you and, you, and you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and to say to him, the Lord the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us take three days journey into the desert to offer sacrifice to the Lord. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. I want to stop there for a minute. Because we know that the angel of Muhammad did go to the elders of Israel. And he did talk to many of the Christian preachers and followers of Christian folk in this country. And many of them listened to them. He had dinner with many of them at his home. And he told them that I am sent me, Master for mm -hmm. Muhammad, Almighty God Allah. But there's no record that the Honorable Muhammad went to the physical Pharaoh with the elders or Aaron and said to Pharaoh face to face let my people go that God has come for us and we want you to let our people go so the point I'm making is that the Israelite like Muhammad fulfills that prophetical role of a Moses but there was one to come after him a prophet like Moses who would do a similar work that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was to do. As did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad bring us out of the spiritual Egypt land, there would be one to come after him to bring us out of the physical Egypt land into a land mm -hmm. flowing with milk and honey. It was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who brought us into the spiritual land of milk and honey, of doing for self, amongst ourselves that 500,000 nations strong but that cannot suffice in order for us to have possession of our humanity we can not just say we have spiritually come out of Egypt and we have spiritually achieved milk and honey we must physically come out of Egypt and physically achieve a land Flowing with milk and honey. If you look here in the script where God directs Moses to go to Egypt with the with some of the elders and say to him, Let us have three days to go and worship our God. Now we know that our God, Master Fraud Muhammad left us with divine messages, with teachings. And in that teaching, he gives us our identity of self, that you are the uh, Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the God of the universe. And that based on that identity, we know that we are people that once owned the planet Earth. 
and that we are to reclaim our planet Earth. So when Moses goes to Pharaoh to say, let us go and worship our God, and we know that there's no historical record of the Iron Realized Muhammad ever going to Pharaoh. He did go and speak in Washington. <laughs> he gave open letters to the government, but he never went physically there. But we do know that the Honorable Silas Muhammad did go to the United Nations. That is the government representing the Caucasian world. And he did say to that pharaoh, let my people go. If you go back and look at the interventions that he gave, in that interventions, he says in the name of Almighty God Allah, Master Farah Muhammad, he gave praise to the Iron Elijah Muhammad as being our teacher. And he points out the condition and the position that we're in right here in America and he closes out that intervention by saying, let my people go. God's instruction to Moses here is to go three days and go worship your God. The Honorable Sallallahu Muhammad said to the UN that we are a minority in the United States of America. We have no identity in United States of America, nor are we recognized on an international stage as a people in possession of their humanity, let us go and identify ourselves. Let us go and meet with one another. In the scripture, say and worship our God. But what he was saying in essence, let us go and gather ourselves and come to an identity of ourselves, did he not? Yes, sir. On an international stage, right? Yes, sir. Amongst all of the Afro descendants who had been displaced across the diaspora, the slavery, transatlantic slave trade, there were some 18, 13 to 18 groups represented there. It was Silas Muhammad who made the call. In the book, it says Moses. But we know that it was the prophet like Moses who actually did the work. That work, the physical work of going to talk to Pharaoh. Let us have a seminar. Let us group. Let us leave Egypt for a minute and go and make camp somewhere else and have a seminar, a forum where we can get together as a people and identify ourselves. There were three of them, am I right? That took place. And we did identify ourselves. We did take possession of who we are. There was debate, there was argument, but that was divine fulfillment of prophecy right in our midst. And when you read the book, you say, well, man, this book, uh, don't state it exactly like so. The Bible has been a book that's been tampered with. We don't know what the devil has put in and out of this book. We don't know what part of it that is poison and what part is good. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it a poison book. He said that there is some truth in it. But the only way you can get the truth out of it, according to the Honorable Silas Muhammad, is to have truth within you. And he is a man of truth, and because he is a man of truth, and who is living the life, he can tell you where the devil has tripped up the book. They got Moses doing some of the work of the prophet like Moses. That child that was cast out and raised up by Pharaoh's daughter. That is not fulfilled by the Iron Realized Muhammad. That Moses that was taught in Pharaoh's world and educated in Pharaoh's world was not the Iron Realized Muhammad. He only received a third grade education. Yes, sir. That one who would be trained 
on the Pharaoh was the Honorable Silas Muhammad. He went to the Devil's University. He's a college graduate. He went to the Devil's military and served under Pharaoh. He received the rank of captain from Ronald Reagan himself. Shook his hand and acknowledged his captain's rank. And when the nation of Islam fell, 1971, before it fell, he was that one sent out in a little basket and floated to safety. As the nation fell, I was in the city of Chicago when Ida Hakim, Caucasian woman, first came to the mosque and boldly stated that, hey, I believe in the honorable Elijah Muhammad and what he taught. And she took up with Silas Muhammad. At the time, Savior was going out to the UN and he was making, I think he did the 1503 communication, but was not as effective. Sister, uh, not sister, but Ida Hakim, Caucasian woman, started an NGO, Caucasians United for Reparations and Emancipation Cure, and began the communications giving us the ability to make the interventions uh, with the UN. So she says that she picked him up as he was waddling in the waters in the UN. So we see the life of the Honorable Silas Muhammad paralleling that prophet like Moses that is in the book. And we see the actions that he has taken up to this point guaranteeing us a position on the world stage for real. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad brought us up to this point, said we were not ready to be delivered. He held us back. He could have gone to the UN himself, but he knew that that was not his job. He knew that there would be somebody coming after him who would do it. And that is the Honorable Silas. Muhammad. Uh, I wanted to go into Jeremiah, but I don't think I really need to. But it talks about, again, a land flowing with milk and honey. And it talks about the uh, a stiff-necked people. But it details in Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 5, and 32 and 22, that these people would fall, that the lost foundation of Islam, after they had come out of Egypt spiritually, would fall, after they had given been given the directions from God to do his will, once he gave the lessons out from his three and a half years here, that they would deviate and serve another God. And that he would chastise them. Did we not see the chastisement of the nation mm -hmm. of Islam? We saw it fall. It fell because of the deviation from the teachings of Almighty God Allah. And the blasphemy of the followers. But it also says in that book, in Jeremiah, that God would come back and that he would deliver them. But what God comes back? That's the honorable Silas Muhammad. That man who elevated his will, his spirit, to that lofty state, that mountain, and could observe the flames of the spirit of truth within his own person. With that, I'm going to close out and leave you as I should greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Well, well, any questions? Oh, can you continue that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a whole bunch right there in, in that Exodus. If you read that, uh, that script, um, but a lot of people don't know that there would be 
two advents of a Moses. There would be one Moses who would come and bring the people out spiritually. And then that other Moses is a prophet like Moses who would uh, take them out physically. Did you have a question, Mish? <laughs> Put your hand on you. Yeah. Oh, you good? Yeah. But that point there of let us take three days journey into the desert that the elf, you remember when the Savior called the elders together? They had a Muhammad speaks issue that had about ten brothers who were in the resurre first resurrection who uh, had come together and visited the mosque and the well, and the Savior was trying to get them together to uh, reestablish the lost foundation of Islam in unity. Um, that's what he did. You know, the unrealized Muhammad was not here when the nation fell. Mm -hmm. uh, Minister. Yes, sir. That I saw on the floor, so. <clears throat> The Muhammad speaks that you have reference to. Uh, I have seen it, but I don't think I have a copy of it where it was the elders from the first resurrection were gathered there. Now, do you have a copy of that? Text? I think I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Justice, do you recall that paper or have a copy of it? So. Oh, that, that was my point. Uh, you're talking about a paper that we are familiar with? Yes, sir. And, uh, well, I figured Brother Justice may not have been aware of it because I had a conversation with him last week. And I found that uh, I think he had come into the nation, what, 2000? 2000, yes, sir. So we're talking about some things. Yes, sir. That unless somebody supplied him with it, uh, it's something that he really does not know about. So I, I, I could see, I could see the question in his hand when he sat down. So these are some things that I really love to put into the hands of anyone who does not have it. That 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 was my point. I yes, saw I like it. Yes, yeah. Um, and you might ask Captain Ali about it. Right. He has many. Old Do you have a copy of that? My Muhammad speaks with the elders on. Yeah, uh, You've seen it. Yes, sir. Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen it. Um, where the honorable South Muhammad was trying to rally. Those brothers and sisters together, right? So you, you got me interested now. I mean, I'm as interested from mm -hmm. the beginning, but uh, I would I'm interested in knowing what became of that. Did any of those elders, are any of those elders with us now? 